North Korea has uh, launched a number of missiles this January, uh, seven missile tests in total. And there's been a real variety of missile tests. There have been some new systems like the uh, hypersonic missiles uh, earlier this month and also some uh, systems that we've seen before, like the Hwasong-12 uh, IRBM, the Intermediate Range Ballistic Missile that was launched on, uh, on Sunday. This was last launched uh, actually in 2017, uh, and it's the, the longest range missile that North Korea has uh, tested since 2017. This missile, uh, unlike the other missiles launched in January, um, is longer range and is actually capable of hitting the uh, US territory of Guam. Um, the, the reason for North Korea testing all of these missiles, uh, the main reason is always to improve its missile capabilities. North Korea, over the past year or so, has been testing an, an ever-diversifying missile arsenal that includes submarine launch ballistic missiles, missiles launched from, from train systems, hypersonic missiles, cruise missiles, the list goes on. And the main advantage of having a diversified missile system is that it uh, poses challenges for uh, defense systems in the region. Um, North Korea, by testing this, these missiles, is also uh, sending the message that um, even though the U.S. is trying to pressure the uh, the DPRK to give up its nuclear weapons through sanctions, North Korea is is basically saying uh, we're going to keep launching these missiles, whether you sanction us or not. Mm. And the only way that you're going to improve relations with us is to drop your hostile policy aka drop the sanctions, drop your joint military exercises with South Korea, uh, play nice, and then maybe we can, uh, we can start talking again. Which is a bit of a standoff in a way. But as you say, with this variety of different rocket capabilities, what is it telling us about the capability North Korea is building up? Um, well, it's, it's an ever-diversifying missile arsenal. Um, it's going to want to keep improving its missiles because um, its, its next-door neighbor, South Korea and Japan, are U.S. allies, and the U.S. has the most powerful military uh, in the world. So it's going to want to build a, a really strong deterrent, uh, a nuclear deterrent, to say to any U.S. president um, that's even thinking about striking North Korea, uh, think, think twice about that, basically. Um, there are a couple of, of um, uh, big dates that we should look out for um, for North Korea uh, to continue uh, testing e even longer range missiles. That's also a possibility because, uh, of course, recently uh, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un um, implied that he, he would reconsider his uh, self-imposed moratorium on uh, long range missile launches. Um, North Korea has a number of long-range missiles that it has yet to test, such as the Hwasong-17 intercontinental ballistic missile that it revealed uh, at a military parade in October 2020. It's still yet to test that. And also in 2021, uh, in January, at the landmark party congress, Kim Jong-un said that he wants to move toward uh, developing solid-fueled ICBMs, which would be um, better than uh, the, the current liquid-fueled ICBMs that he has at the moment, because uh, solid-fuel ICBMs um, it, there is a much shorter preparation time. So in the event of a conflict, uh, North Korea can be much more flexible in its options to, to strike the US. Interesting. And of course, they are starting to slowly reopen their borders with China. How prepared are they for any COVID coming in? Well, they're very cautious. They're extremely cautious uh, and, and paranoid and fearful about any COVID coming in. And that's why they've largely kept the borders almost totally shut since the uh, pandemic started around uh, two years ago now. Um, North Korea has, has built a disinfection center near the border with China, and it's recently started 
testing this disinfection sensor, it, it reopens uh, a little bit of trade through uh, the uh, rail system uh, across the border to uh, Dandong in, in China. Um, and it's, it's storing some of these goods at the disinfection sensor in North Korea. Now, NK News understands that goods might be quarantined in this disinfection sensor for around three months. So uh, you can imagine, even though North Korea is slightly, uh, ever so slightly, very, very slowly opening its borders uh, to, to trade, to try and rescue its decimated economy, uh, it's, it's going to take a really long time for these goods to actually reach the people of North Korea. And it remains to be seen actually how effective um, these disinfection centers will be at facilitating trade uh, into North Korea. Again, there could be a huge bottleneck um, if, if the disinfection centers aren't able to quickly process a large amount of goods. Um, of course, North Korea, the other issue is that North Korea remains uh, totally uh, unvaccinated as, as far as we understand. Um, and uh, that's going to be a real issue um, because uh, even, even before the pandemic, actually in October 2019, there was a report uh, that, that said North Korea was the third worst prepared country in the entire world uh, in the event of a major disease outbreak. Extraordinary. James, always good to talk. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.